Now we've got some more myths here, and this is one I love because it's near and dear to my heart because I'm an advocate of high-end quartz. So now, this is the myth. Quartz calibers are disposable by nature and definition, and we're rating this one a thunderous false. Yes. I mean, let's start with the most basic. Rolex caliber 5035 and 5055, the oyster quartz. Since 1977, those first oyster quartzes, we still see them in service. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful watches. They are extremely expensive to service now because of the price of the motor. Um, and when I say the motor, it's an actual hairspring with an escapement. And the way that quartz works different than other quartz is where it's not a driven motor where a, a circuit tells it, go ahead and step, and it actually throws it. The way the oyster quartz works, it actually drives. It, it drives back and forth. It has it, a Swiss it has an lever escape wheel. It has it an actually, escape wheel. Yeah. And it actually drives back and forth with a balance. And they're, they're beautiful to watch. They're actually, they're a dead second. Uh, they're, uh, they're adjustable, which means they're trimmable. Uh, they're actually absolutely beautiful movements. Another thing besides the quartz, if you look at the Breitlings, <clears throat> any of the Breitlings, uh, I believe it's after 1984, 84, when they went to Super yeah, Quartz. Right, right yeah. about, uh, they actually started using the ET, I want to say caliber, like 50, 56, I believe. And then a little bit later, they went to the Thermal Compensator. Yeah, yeah the Thermal Compensator is the Super Quartz. Now, Omega played with it before. They had a model um, that, that actually has a, a compensator. It's a Thermal Compensator, which takes a temperature reading every 15 seconds, 30 seconds, because the temperature reading is the only variable in the quartz circuit that is going to tell it to run faster or slower. So it's set at a certain temperature. What the Super Quartz does and what Omega did <coughs> was they actually took a temperature reading and it would vary. Okay, your watch, you know, we're down 10 degrees, the watch is going to run a little faster, let's go ahead and trim it down. So the watch is, is mm -hmm. constantly regulating itself and that's why they're getting the incredible numbers they're getting yeah. off the Super Quartz, but they're also more, a lot more expensive to service and parts are just outrageous. That circuit itself is hundreds of dollars as compared to a $25 or $30 circuit for a regular 955. Yeah, consider it like the balance in a chronometer. Um, the way different. Yeah. yeah, way different, but in terms of price, that's going to be the big piece. Now, the other thing that's important to note is that, you know, it doesn't just have to be the Rolex Oyster Quartz calibers. They're well known, but the original Breitling Aerospace from the middle of the 80s, we still see that caliber 56. It's like an ETA 988 yeah, base. Yeah, great movement. It keeps coming in. And these are watches that, you know, trade sometimes for a few hundred dollars. Lifetime serviceable, mm -hmm. decades-long service life. And you know they have to be they have to be serviced and lubricated and cleaned and returned to service by a watchmaker. Yeah, they're they're lifetime <coughs> products. Yeah, they are absolutely. And I'll also say this: take a look at the Seiko Creador Aiki One and Aiki Two. Take a look at those seven R movements finished to a standard yeah. that would impress Philippe Dufour, and we know this because he counseled the Seiko micro artists who make the watches. That's a quartz movement. And on that, I rest my case for courts.